Ann Barclow is a horticulturist with the city of Greenwood and she coordinates the volunteers who do a lot of the work in the various gardens around town. And when I've I've been talking to you, it sounds like wherever y'all have had a traditional little green meatball garden, when you get a chance, you turn it into something else. Yes, we do. We do. We do. Right now we're in the bioretention pond, which we've called the Oak Avenue Rain Pollinator Garden. <laughs> and this collects water from the parking lot, a very large parking lot. And so we planted a pollinator garden and milkweed here for the monarchs. To help with that, so it's it's uh, the types of plants that need uh, to withstand flooding yes. and holding water, and also to withstand drought because there's no irrigation here. So we've picked a really different palette of plants than we would in our other pollinator gardens. And then not far from here, you have one where I think y'all are trying to show people that in a beautiful pollinator garden there's also room for food. Yes, and actually it's at the farmer's market and it's an edible landscape or foodscaping some people call it. And so we've grown a lot of vegetables there along with your traditional plants but also with milkweed and pollinator plants. We have milkweed everywhere. And pollinator plants so that the we have along the fence we put some beans and yes, exactly. We have eggplant and bell peppers and tomatoes and okra and all kinds of things that we actually volunteers harvest those and give them to our food banks for them. Oh, so. What a wonderful thing to yeah. have going on. Yeah. And it is right there by the farmer's market so people can get some ideas, I guess, of how they could incorporate in their home garden themselves. That was the idea. That was the idea. And we also have the splash pad there where all the kids come all summer. Oh. And so they come and actually sample some of the tomatoes. Cool. Yeah, so. And we always think about pollinators. Most people immediately think about honeybees, but a lot of them are solitary bees, and do they have different requirements for their nest and for reproduction? Yes, the solitary bees, we have uh, bee hotels at several of our gardens, so they can go in those little tubes, but also the nesting, they have nesting capabilities, and so they don't, mulch is almost like moving concrete for them. Oh, so we gosh, try yeah. to leave some bare ground or just mulch with leaves for them. Oh. And then also people often think of, like you say, honeybees, and then you have a solitary bees, but there's also birds, like hummingbirds, that are great pollinators of certain flowers that bees can't even get into. And your beetles, which are originally pollinated, are magnolias. Yes. And so they're a great pollinator. Anything, any insect that can walk along a plant with pollen on it and move it to the next plant can be a pollen. Even an <laughs> ant can be a pollinator. So. And in some places, even bats in different. Bats yeah, in, yeah. in in your desert areas yeah. are very important. Of course, butterflies. So. And one of the things about the pollinator garden over there, um, and all of them, is that y'all are all encompassed under the overlay of Bee City. Tell yes. us about what being a Bee City City means. We became a Bee City USA several years ago, and what that encompasses is that any new plantings or anything that we add needs to be uh, natives, not, yes. not completely, but a lot of native plants which support pollinators and our wildlife. Yes. And we need to provide pollen and nectar from the whole seed from spring all the way through fall. Wow. So it's a long season. We need a varied amount of flower structures, colors, and so there's, so that's one of the things. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to educate, educate. So we're always going, we have booths and we educate. We go to farmer's market with kids and have them put on antennas and have them find food that's pollinated by insects. And so we a lot of community outreach and of course, pesticides. We try to reduce drastically our use of pesticides. These gardens bring in beneficial insects. So we have parasitizing wasp, we have predator wasp, we have all kinds of lacewing larvae and, and all kinds of things. And birds, and y'all have had done a wonderful thing with some artists in town. Oh yes, we got Tweet on Main Street, which was <laughs> done by a couple of grade school classes. 
and we have birds located on a scavenger hunt of nine South Carolina birds so that you can find them and educate the people at the same time of the importance of our native birds. They're ceramic birds that have been painted. And by our artists. And then yes. you do a lot of um, things with topiaries and so I noticed one of them has a green roof, the birds mm -hmm. perched on a green yeah, roof. Yeah, we work together with our woodworkers and they built a living roof greenhouses <laughs> and we put moss on them like we put in the topiaries and then we planted them with succulents so they don't really need any care. Now everybody's downtown has a brewery and I think you've got a brewery for, for the bees. <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh we do, we do. it. One of our, our largest pollinator gardens is a Veteran Plaza pollinator garden and that one we built a, a water feature. Now it's tricky because you want it moving water so you don't get the mosquitoes mm -hmm. but you want it shallow enough for the bees. And so we've named it the, the Bee Bar and Grill. Bee Bar and Grill. Yes. I just think and so that's they so have fun. the bar, they have all the pollinator plants, and uh -huh. then they have their, you know, <laughs> they have their little bar there. So, yeah, it's worked out really well, and we see a lot of bees in there, and especially this time of year as they're getting ready to close up their hives and, and that sort of thing. But what's funny about bees is that they take drops of water and they put it on the honeycomb, mm -hmm. and then they fan their wings. And that cools them. It's of almost course, like the Carolina cooler in our greenhouse, right? And they so figured they knew they probably, it yeah. long before we did. Yeah, we probably learned it from them, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, this has just been such a delightful treat to come and see all the fun, yeah. the wonderful things that are happening here. Yeah. And I think um, y'all have a page on your city website yes somewhere. we do and it's an opportunity if people want to volunteer we couldn't do any of this without our volunteers so we have to say that and and so we have a page and I usually tell people just google city of Greenwood B city USA and that'll take you there you'll find out about our volunteer opportunities and you'll also learn that we have plant lists there if people are interested oh. to find that and we have all kinds of things that will help them start their own pollinator garden well I want to thank you for making an oasis for um, the animals that are so important to mm. adding joy to our life. Well, it feeds my soul, so it's good. <laughs> Thank you.